you're feeling down And like your world's moving slow Just remember your race It moves at your pace when marching towards your goals Nothing is impossible, don't take impossible, you're brighter than the stars. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Talking with 3D. I am your host, Derek Darrell Dixon, right here on Plushwork TV. And I am so excited to bring you in on this show today. As you know, we are celebrating Black history, and I thought it, it is so important for us to sit talk about it, discuss it, and educate ourselves. Have you noticed on my uh, Facebook page and, and on Instagram on Talking With 3D, I have been posting our history and things that we normally don't talk about. You know, we do talk a lot about Martin Luther King and uh, Rosa Parks. We talk about those things, but there's so much more in Black history that we don't discuss. And I think that it's time that, you know, we learn how to educate ourselves more about our culture, who we are, where we come from, because a lot of times in our school systems, we don't get that education. It's always one thing that we are taught. And that's mostly about Martin Luther King. And that's not, we're not taking anything away from Martin Luther King, because Martin Luther King was the one that, that paved the way for so much of what we are doing today. But we want to dive into knowing true Black history and where a lot of it started. You know, off the shores of the Atlantic, 5,000 miles from America, there's a place called Maryland. And it's not Baltimore, Maryland. It's Africa's Maryland, founded by the free American slaves that set sail from Fells Point 26 decades ago. They found a new day. And there's so much history. So much forgotten African history that's also, that starts right here in Baltimore, Maryland. You know, 1834, 95,000 left to start Africans, Maryland. And a lot of people went back to Liberia and to uh, have the liberty. And that's where they got the word Liberia from the word liberty. A lot of them got sick. A lot of people died. A lot of people tried to go back. To America because that's where they felt like they had the, the ability to be who they wanted to be. So we're going to dive into uh, knowing a lot more history about Liberia, about Africa's Maryland, how it got started, and a lot of the presidents that are uh, born right here in the United States. So listen, I want you to sit back. I want you to watch just a little documentary of Africa's Liberia. And then we'll be right back. And we'll be back with my special guest, Junda Morris, who is going to be giving us so much information. That beautiful Junda Morris is here on Talking With 3D. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back. If you know where to look, a map of Africa holds a secret on the shores of the Atlantic, 5,000 miles from America. There is a place called Maryland, founded by freed American slaves who set sail from Fells Point 17 decades ago. But they found a new day, actually. That was a new day. They found it here. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And as I promised, the beautiful Junda Morris is here with me on Talking with 3D, and I am so excited to have you, Junda. How are you doing today? I am blessed and highly favored. Thank you for having me. Jen, Junda, I always, always love just being in your presence, having conversations with you, because you always will light up the room wherever you are. Oh. And uh, the thing is this with, with you, Junda, is that... Uh, you always sense to know if something is wrong. You, you'll call if something, you know, just some encouraging words, you'll call. Something I've done just that may have 
enlightening you, your call. And I appreciate that with you, Duna, because the fact that a lot of times we don't, we don't share as, and I'm not saying you and I, but as people, we don't share each other and we don't, we don't give each other accolades because there's just so much pressure in the world. And there's so much uh, people feel like we have to compete with each other to, um, you know, have a title or to have names. When if we learn how to work together and we learn how to share those things together, oh my gosh, the, the power we would have because we are some powerful Black people. And if Absolutely. we would learn that about ourselves, the power that we have, we've changed so much in America. We've changed so much in the world that we'd have to learn as Black people to know that you as Black people have so much history. And we've changed the way that people do so many things in the world. But the fact is that we don't take the time to learn that history. So Absolutely. we're going to do that today. We're going to do this, but we can't. We can't, we can't give everybody all the history because <laughs> I want people to, and this is what I want people to do. I want you to get the information, but I want you to research. And as I've been posting little things here uh, throughout the week, some things have made me tear up. Some things have made me angry that we as Black people had to go through this it's amazing, uh, but the power, the strength that we have, it's amazing to me. So I, we, we're going to get into it, but I, agenda. <laughs> <laughs> we can go on and on and on. You can go on and on and on about it, but it's not about me today. It's about you, and it's about Black history, and it's about celebrating our Blackness. So I am excited to do this show. So Duna, tell us and tell everybody watching Talking With 3D a little bit about yourself. Well, I, I usually start the narrative off as I'm this little girl born in Painesville, Joba, Liberia. And I'm, I, I was a history buff <laughs> mm. growing up. And, and, and my, um, my family in Liberia has so much history, mm. um, but I'm from that little country, West Africa, on the west coast of Africa okay. called Liberia, mm. the capital city, Monrovia, named after President James Monroe yes. of the United States. Yes. Tell me, as a little girl growing up in Liberia, Africa, and just knowing, um, you know, on the, on the other side of this water, there's this place called the United States. What was it like for a young girl? And, and did you have dreams thinking one day I'm going to, I'm going to go to the United States and see what it's about? Did you, did you talk about it? as children, did you talk about it as a family, about one day we're going to see the United States? Absolutely. Um, you know, that is everybody's dream, almost every child's dream, not mm -hmm. just Liberia, but the whole of Africa. Everybody wants to come to the U.S. Um, but for me, I was fortunate. I think I came to the U.S. probably when I was probably, what, three years old, something like that, right. three or four years old. So I came at a young age. Obviously, I can't remember. Just little snippets of things that I can't remember, um, you know, but um, because my mom actually got her master's from University of Pittsburgh. Okay. So, you know, I, and I had lots of family that are, that were already here in the U.S., but not only that, I also, when my primary education was at a school um, called the School of Prime System, and this school was founded by an African-American duo, a mother and daughter. Mm. They moved back to, to, to Liberia um, back in the days when a lot of African-Americans were transitioning and moving to Liberia. They moved back and created a school called the School of Prime System. And so that's where I got my you know, primary education that, that has molded me into who I am today. 
So um, literally we learned and celebrated every holiday there was in the U.S. because they brought those things that they learned over here back to Liberia. So we live like we were in the U.S. and that was the thing, you know, you had to learn how to speak like you were American and we all practice like we were, right. you know, so it was that thing, you know, so, you know, when I came over to the U.S., it was funny because I came when I was 16 and they were expecting the African girl. Okay. <laughs> and this is 1990. Salt and pepper was hot. I had the salt and pepper haircut, and I was, <laughs> and I had the big earrings, and, and I, I had my my hair was shaved in the back. Right. And, and I walked into the school, and the the lady was. She was talking to my guidance counselor. Was talking to me, and she was screaming, oh, "Welcome!" And I'm sitting there like. Why is she screaming to right. myself, right? And I said, ma'am, why are you screaming in this voice? Because I could already speak like, like I'm speaking now. I didn't come right. with an accent like right. that. Right? <laughs> so she said, oh, you speak English. <laughs> Where did you learn to speak English? And me being a smart aleck, I said, on the plane, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> on my 10-hour ride. <laughs> and I um, said, there's no need to yell. I'm right here. I can hear it. Right. I can hear every word you're, you're saying. saying. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> wow. You know, but, but, but that's, you know, that's because we, and if you know the Liberian history, which we're going to dive into here, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, our Pledge of Allegiance it's almost like the United States. I can mm. sit and say the Pledge of Allegiance. The only thing that we insert is I pledge allegiance to the flag of Liberia and to the Republic okay. of which it stands. You know, so, you know, we kind of marry because when the slaves went back, mm -hmm. that was what they knew. So they took what they knew and inserted it into the, you know, the, 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 the daily lives, you know, our form right. of government is democratic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, you know, we have the Congress, but it's the, you know, the House of Representatives and Senators, you know, so you have all of those things that are, that they took back, they that, took back. They, that they took back to, you know, to Liberia, you know, so, so many similarities that we share, mm. um, because, and I always say that Liberia history is African American history. Is African American history. <laughs> because, because the fact that, that like you're saying, and again, I want people to understand is that the, the freed Africans took that information back and started the, you know, took the information back to Liberia and started the new or formatted Liberia. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to make sure Absolutely. I'm getting that correct. Yeah, no, no, no. You're, you're getting it right. Obviously, there were people on the land. There were the there indigenous were on the land. Liberians. Right. That were on the land mm -hmm. um, and know. they welcomed them back they welcomed them back into liberia celebrating them wanting to know this new information absolutely 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 and maryland county and that's why that's so dear to me that's where my family is from my mother family is from maryland county so we shared in, and again um, we got to make sure we tell people maryland county is africans is Africa, Maryland. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Because I'm gonna tell you, June, that I had to, I had to watch a, that documentary over and over and I'm like, okay, are they talking about Baltimore, Maryland? But it's amazing, like what you're saying is they took a lot of stuff from Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, and I have to say Baltimore, Maryland, so people understand, to Africa and made Maryland in Africa. Absolutely. In the middle, yes. in the middle of Maryland County, Hopper, they have Baltimore Street. Oh. <laughs> they do. <laughs> do they have half and half? Chicken boxes. <laughs> but but you know, obviously in America, modern America as we know it, uh -huh. Barack Obama, 
you know, when, you know, we were, we were excited because he was the first black president, right? I right. said, well, let's go back in history. If right. we go back in history, the first black president, the first democratic black president yes. was Joseph Jenkins Roberts from mm -hmm. Richmond, Virginia, born in Richmond, Virginia. And he was the first president of Liberia. Mm. And so, that was from uh, 1848 to 1856. Absolutely, absolutely. So let me let me ask you this. Let me, and, to, and let's just start getting into this history. How how now did Joseph Jenkins Roberts, who became president, the first president of Liberia, had already had moved back to Liberia at that time? Because then, how does someone that was born in Virginia, the United States? then become the president of Liberia? Um, actually, he went, um, he, he was pretty wealthy. He came from a wealthy background. And, okay. his, you know, he had some money. I think his family were into the, the um, <clears throat> shipping business. They had ships and things. So he was pretty wealthy, um, you know, when he went back to Liberia. So I'm sure with his wealth and him, you know, um, once, because Maryland, when they came, they wanted to be on their own. So right. they were separated from Liberia. So I think when they joined <clears throat> in with Liberia, they now incorporated the free slaves into, you know, the 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 making of the government, and that's yes. how he became, you know, the the first president of Liberia. Gotcha. Listen, we are going to dive into some more history of Liberia, our Black history, Africa. We are going to get into some more information. From June to Morris, we're, we're here learning that today. But we're going to take a look where you guys don't go anywhere. This is some good information that we need to know about our Black culture, our Black history. Um, we, I want to talk more about the different presidents that were born right here in the United States, because I think it's important that we, we say their names. You know, we say a lot of names that people that have been shot and everything. But let's say the names of our Black history it's made a difference. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. When they smile and they talk and they say, I want to go to school. I want my mother to have a job. Or I want my market woman. There they're saying that we know we don't have it today, but we, leave, we believe it's going to be there tomorrow. That is my greatest satisfaction. For most Liberians, each new day is still a desperate struggle but it holds the promise of a new beginning. In their schools, churches, and faces, you can see it, an enduring hope that they never lost, that a better day is ahead. During our week in Maryland County, we had seen destruction, despair, and desperate poverty. But on Sunday morning, something changes. The church bells toll, the choir sing, and just for a moment, there's a glimpse of what may lie ahead. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talking With 3D. I am here with my special guest, Junda Morris. And again, we are here just talking because this is the month of Black history. And Black history is more than a lot of times what we've learned in our textbooks. There's so much more to learn about where we came from and, and the history and how it was formatted. And a lot of people, they didn't know that, you know, a lot of the freed slaves went back to Liberia and took what they knew and what they learned right here in Baltimore, Maryland, and took that back to Liberia, where there's now a Africa's Maryland. So not to confuse you, but you've got to do your history to understand everything about it. So it's so fascinating. So June, I know right now there's a celebration that yes. is taking place in Liberia. So tell us about the um, celebration, and then we'll talk some more about the president's that, um, that have governed over Liberia as well. Okay, so um, 200 years ago, um, after slavery was over um, with the Marcus Garvey movement and, and all of that, the US gave um, African-Americans who decided that they wanted to go back to a free land. Um, hmm. And they, 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 the, the organization was called the American Colonization Society, ACS. Um, they were funded by the US government and they were given a ship, um, it was called the Elizabeth Ship, and they set sail to Liberia. Mm. And um, so this is the celebration that has been celebrated um, throughout the whole entire year. Um, we have Roland Martin in Liberia 
um, right now. Um, as we speak um, with the, you know, the president of Liberia, President George, we are headed by him and um, a standing committee um, that is celebrating um, this, this um, amazing history um, that we have and that the ties of Liberia to um, the U.S., um, and, and, you know, that, that's history that we, want, we don't want to die um, because, you know, when they did the African-American Museum, I was like, God, you know, they should have really put more about Liberia in the African-American Museum, mm -hmm. but hopefully we'll time, we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get those things in there, but that's definitely history that we don't want to lose um, right. because some of those people are dying off, um, but we want to make sure that we share that history and we let our younger generation know about the history and the connection of Liberia to mm -hmm. um, 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 the U.S. and to Black people in um, in America. Let me ask you this, Gina, and, and uh, you brought up something. How come it? How why do you, why do you think that we don't connect a lot of our Black history with Liberia? You know, I, I, I'm, that's a good question. Um, you know, I mean, one of it, I, I, I would say, and I, 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 and hopefully, this is something that that that's been worked on. Um, mm -hmm. maybe we don't market the country as, as well, okay. you know, um, and that's, you know, that that's work in progress, you know, and this is one of the things that President George Weir and others, you know, are working on to make sure that we get that visibility. And, um, we, we, we definitely make those things known and let people know that, that we're here and we, we're, we're all one. I mean, because, you know, I mean, my last name is Morris. You can mm -hmm. find anybody here in the U.S. who whose last name is Morris. I mean, right. if I before I open my mouth to speak, you probably would have been like, hey, you know, maybe she from somewhere in in Baltimore, or something like that. Right. You know? So, so um, and we're one, and the history of of Liberia, um, at, as you know, in that documentary, um, in the the museum of what's the museum? It's, it's down in Baltimore where you could find letters of the slaves. Right. They, they were writing their families, you know, and saying, you know, some of them were saying, you know. They, they, you know, not some of them were not so good things, but then the others were writing letters and telling that people come over, you know, there's the land of the free, you know, we, mm -hmm. you know, and, and some of the information that's there, you know, Bob Johnson um, built a hotel in Liberia after, you know, he sold it after a while, but he built a hotel in Liberia because of the fact that Liberia is where African Americans can become citizens. Mm. And it's where, you know, only Black people can become, you know, citizens in Liberia. That's a law on the books. You know, so those are things that we need to market and get more African Americans interested in coming to Liberia. Obviously, you know, we're coming out of war, we're working and building right. the country, but we need more people to come in, even if it's not coming to stay, but just coming to the see and look at the possibilities of things that can be done, or you mm -hmm. can, you know, that can be done in the country. And that's where Roland Martin is sitting there. I'm sure he's having a fantastic time. Um, um, I understand a little birdie, President of Barack Obama might be going. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, but and 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 but but we're hoping that those things happen and we can get right. people to come in and out of the country, or even if they're not coming, but to learn the history and know the history and tell the kids about the history of Liberia and how we connect. If I am to travel to Liberia, and once I land in Liberia, what did I expect? What would be my experience? Um, <laughs> you know, what I tell, um, like, um, when we were talking to the producer earlier, he would say, you know, most African-Americans are when people go, they go with their nose up in the air mm -hmm. and have all these high expectations. Now, see, that's the difference between black people and white people. When white people go, they want to see nature. They want to go and experience okay. the things of the natives, you know? So I would say when you go have an open mind, mm. um, you know, Everything is not going to be perfect. Um, you know, it, it, it is a third world country. We're working. Um, you know, right. we're coming out of war, so we're working on things within the country. But what I tell you, Liberian people are very hospitable people, um, you know, and, and um, the food is great. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and, and rightfully so, because that's another thing that they took back is that our food, Liberian food, is like food from down south. Right. Um, you know, so we have collard greens and we have cornbread and we have all of those kinds of things. And, but we put a little bit of Liberian twist and a little bit of spice. You know, <laughs> <I see>. <laughs> <laughs> but but we, you know, we have some of the same things. But I would say just, you know, relax, no high expectation. 
Right. You know, and because I think when people go in and they have all these high expectations and they're looking for the high rise and they look and not that we don't have some of those, but if you don't see that connect with nature, connect with the people, see what it is that the people are going through and just see, you know, what can I do to at least, you know, be some kind of help or maybe right. I'll tell other friends for us to go. Maybe we're not coming to stay, but we might take vacation because that money that we're putting, that we're bringing in can help and be stimulated in the economy to help some, you know, mm -hmm. some family or some young person, you know, live a better life. So. Right. If I, and another question I have for you too, is because, uh, um, if I'm traveling to Liberia and you, it, you would kind of be afraid because of the fact that I don't know how they would accept me. You know, even as a black man, a black person, how will they still accept me? Because of the fact you think, you know, your, your skin color might be just a little shade different or your features are a little different. So when you go to Liberia, and you, you know, I think Mike or your sister has said this too that, uh, you know, our noses might, you know, we get off the plane thinking we're all that. And I think, you know, you, when you see it, you, you'd be like, oh, wow. How would I be embraced? How will the cultures and, you know, learning take me to learn about myself and about Liberia? You know, <laughs> A lot of us, when we come over to the U.S., um, you know, it's nowhere like home mm -hmm. because the way that you're received, even if you're an African-American, it makes you want to come back mm. because people want to know you. Okay. They want to be around you. They'll embrace you. You know, not like your, your, um, my mom when she was there because she, she lived with me and, um, and very had a big job and all of that was very well known. And she said, I could drive down Broad Street because we had Broad Street. I could drive down Broad Street and everybody will be calling my name, Mrs. Mm. Morris, Mrs. Morris, you know, and they'll be called because of who she was. But in the US, she said, nobody calls your name. Wow. Nobody knows you. Wow. you know? So it's more of this family, like everybody wants to know, you know, um, somebody can come and, you know, they stay in a house and they don't even know who their neighbors are. You That's know? true. Yeah. <laughs> and, you could be, and you could live in your home 20 plus years and not speak to your neighbors. Absolutely. But it's not like that. You know, it's more of a family, you know, um, 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 you know I went to a church. We, we lived in Clinton, Maryland, just a quick story in Clinton, Maryland. Mm -hmm. And we have been going to this church forever. We'll come in and it's an older church because my grandfather was a, was a, um, Episcopal priest. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm, I'm Anglican and so we stick to, so, but, you know, we go to the church and we go in every Sunday, we come out high, 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 nobody really never, in, you know, the, the priest engaged us because, you know, but nobody really knew. So when my mom passed away, we have almost like 1500 people at the funeral. Mm. We literally shut the whole Clinton, Maryland down because wow. people came from all over because of who my mother was. And you had all the people in the church. Well, who is she? Who? Right. And then they started reading her life sketch. And it was like, well, no, he was like, but you guys never stopped to ask. Mm. She and her daughter, they've been in this church forever. They go in and they come every Sunday, but nobody ever stopped to wow. talk to her. You know, to know wow. who, she, who she was, you know. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of um, environment that you would get in Liberia. And it will make you say, you know what? I want to come back. Right. Because it makes you feel important. We make you feel at home like you are, you're somebody. Mm -hmm. Not just anybody walking right. down the street. You're, right. treated, you're treated like they want you to be treated. So, And you get a lot, you know, we watch a, a lot of the uh, of movies. You watch Coming to America and everything. So you you have this, this image of there's these big palaces, there's all this royalty and, you know, all this going on in Africa. And, and I want, you know, not to say that there's not, because I always know there's a lot of rich royalty that does come from Africa. And, you know, we as, you know, our ancestors, they, you know, they uh, make up that, that uh, our DNA from that. Mm -hmm. So, 
what is that like? Because I know that, you know, like you said, there's the, there's places where there's poverty, like it is here in the United States, but there is that area where it's just like royalty there. Is that, is that in Liberia? Yeah, I mean, you have you have your rich, your upper elites, and then you have, you know, your poor. I mean, but the, the thing about Liberia that's a little bit different from here, at least you have a little bit of middle class. You know, you have okay. your poor, then you have the middle class. There is either you have it or you don't. So there's okay. middle, and you know, right. and then, you know, so people, but you have the beautiful homes, you have the nice hotels, you have the mm-hmm. nice beaches, you know, you have that. It's about affordability and can you go, you know, to those places. But just like the U.S. or just like anywhere else, there's ghetto. <laughs> there's right. ghetto there too, you know. Right, right, right. And, and, you know that, that that's just like anywhere else, any like just like yes. Anywhere. Well, listen, we're going to show another clip of the documentary, and we're going to um, come back. We're going to talk some a little bit more about the presidents that are in um, Liberia that have governed in Liberia. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'm talking with June Morris right here on Talking with Three D. For seven days, we traveled the muddy, bumpy, almost impassable roads of Maryland County. We found little that remains of what the first set was built when they arrived from Baltimore. One exception, this Episcopal church in Kavala, built by missionaries who arrived in 1834 on the first ship from Baltimore to America. Behind the church, the graves of early settlers born in America, Boston, Massachusetts. Milton, Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C. Crumbling but vivid reminders of forgotten family ties. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back. I am here with Duna Morris. You are watching Talking with 3D, and I am your host, Derek Darrell Dixon. We're right here on Plush Work TV. Listen, Junda, um, we had mentioned earlier and had to start talking about the presidents that have uh, governed over in Liberia. And I do wanna, I wanna make sure that that a lot of people are aware of who they were, who they are, their names, um, that were born right here in the US of A. And, um, you know, a lot of us didn't know that. You know, we had, uh, we mentioned the very first president, Joseph Jenkins Roberts from 1848 to 1856, born right here in Virginia. Um, Stephen Allen Benson, 1856 to 1864, was born in Maryland, USA, was elected four times. Also, uh, Daniel Daniel Warner from 1864 to 1868, born in Maryland. He was elected twice. Also, we have uh, James Spriggs of Payne from 1868 to 1870, born in Virginia, was elected twice. Second term was from 1876 uh, to 1870. I'm sorry, 1876 and on. So he he had uh, into his second term. So, Junda, you know, again, a lot of people are not even aware that these presidents were born right here in the United States. And there's other names, Edward Royce, James Smith, Joseph Jenkins, again, as we spoke to him about him before, um, Anthony uh, William. Gardner, and then Alfred Russell. He was the vice president, completed Gardner's term in 1883 to 1884. So, so much history that, you know, again, we don't even know about. We don't even discuss. We've had presidents that were born right here in the U.S. that were the presidents over in Liberia. So that, to me, is very fascinating, but also very inspiring inspiring to know that they were born here in the United States. They were born here right here in Maryland and then went to Liberia to govern that state. So, I mean, is that, it, was that the common, do you think that was the common thing at that time? Yes, it, it definitely was the common thing at that time. Most of them that were presidents um, up until 1980 were all mm-hmm. either ancestors of free slaves um of you know it wasn't until 1980 where you know an indigenous liberian 
mm. in the country. But up until then, it was mostly free slaves or children or free slaves that were possibly now, they were now born in Liberia versus being born in the U.S. that now turn, you know, to become presidents of, of, of the country. What, do you, what, what did you want to tell us about um, Black history, our history, Liberian history, that you think that we don't know of and that we need to educate ourselves more of? Like we were saying, of the uh, Black history museums and things that we need to bring more of Liberia, could we bring more of Liberia into our history to teach our children now? You know, especially the Liberian art, you know, that's because, you know, art tells a story and you have mm -hmm. a lot of young people and I, you know, I'm teaming up with the young, the Union of Liberian Artists and they're, you know, hopefully we can, we're working on trying to put together an art, um, you know, traveling show that we can now talk about, you know, the ship because the Elizabeth ship, when it came, it actually, um, it capsized in the ocean and it stayed mm. in the water, you know? So those kinds of things of history that we can bring out and, and, and um, letting people know, you know, more, more, more of those things, um, you know, the foods, um, mm -hmm. the, the Geechee people in South Carolina, the Gola, we have a tribe called the Gola tribe, you know, they mm. call them the Gola Geechee. And we still connect because when you go to, to the Gola, the Gola Geechee count in South Carolina, it's exactly like Liberia. It's exactly like Maryland County. Mm -hmm. It's exactly like places like Burrowville and, and Carisburg. Those are all, you know, the traditional, and we call them the Congo tribe. Those are all of those settlements that free slaves kind of settle in around Liberia. Outside of Maryland County, there were other settlements that they settle in around Liberia. And they, you know, they kind of spread around the country after right. they left Maryland. They spread around the country to other parts of the country. So, you know, those are things and just connecting with our foods and, 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 and um, I'm just, you know, into, you know, be, before the war, we used to do student exchange program. That was really mm. great. Yeah. Back okay. in the days, I mean, because I know we had a student exchange student that was in my school, um, you know, when I was growing up. Right. You yeah. Know, I mean, so, yes. uh, you know, when, when, when we used to write, we had pen pals. Remember? Yes. yes. <laughs> I remember it. Yes, we sure did. <laughs> you telling your age, June, but yes, you had the right. You had pen pals. <laughs> you know, but you, you know, so those kinds of things, you know, connecting, maybe not, you know, with social media, connecting with young people there, and they have some amazing schools, you know, where maybe we can get sister school programs that young people can connect with young kids in Liberia mm -hmm. and teach them, you know, via social media that they can connect and do things together, you know, so that kind of, you know, the, those, those kinds of things are things that, um, yeah. you know, we, we could look more into doing so that way that history yeah. can bridge, bridge the, the bridge the, the, the two right. um, histories. Bridge the gap. And you know, the, uh, it's a good idea to, you know, we, we're joking about the pen pal, but you know what? It's such a good idea to bring that back yes. because we have social media and we would think, oh, well, we can just do this. But see, we've lost so much trust in social media. If I could sit down and truly write a letter, a heartfelt letter and, and connect to a pen pal, that the, the experience it's totally different because when we did have the pen pals, our, our experience was so just, we didn't know about social media, but that experience to have a pen pal, and you got excited to get that letter. This yes. letter is coming from, you know, Africa or Paris, wherever that pen pal was. It was so exciting. And they were excited to get that letter from the U.S. That was something when you were in school and got a letter that came yeah. for you and you were just excited. You were it when you got yes. a letter from a pen pal. <laughs> from your pen pal and you got, you got pictures of the family and everything, the most, it, it was so encouraging. So that, I mean, I'm seriously, that would be something We could be onto something, Derek. To bring we back. could be yes. onto something. No, yes. but, but not only that, that's another way of teaching young people how to write. How to write, how to communicate. Communicate. Yes. And we could be onto something, Derek. Okay. So <laughs> we, we, 
ain't gonna say nothing else because somebody was listening right now. Be like, oh, hey, let me say, say, we ain't gonna do that. No, you're not me and Tuna about to do something. So uh, you heard it right here on Talking with 3D. So come back. We did it first right here on Talking with 3D. Or we brought it back. That's what I'm gonna say. We brought it back. But listen, Junda, there's so many things. Um, um, uh, you know, I, I do want to say this before I ask you a couple other questions. So I think it's important that people know their history of who they are. Um, you know, we have an Ancestry.com and all that kind of stuff. But to know, you know, you mentioned a couple of the tribes and things like that, because we as Black people, we come from them. You know, we come from um, West Africa and, and Liberia. And I think it's important for us to know that. You know, um, you know, I know a, a lot of people have looked at me and thought, oh, you would be from this part of West Africa, or you would be part of this tribe from your features. So I think it's exciting for us to know that. And I'm learning as I get older that I want to know these things, you know? So how do we inspire our young black children to say, yes, it is important, you know, even, if, you know, for your, or to do your family tree, because we've gotten away from, again, from the pen pals, from the family trees, we've gotten away from that. So I think that we need to re-inspire our black youth and, and our black people to reconnect to our family roots, our family trees. Absolutely. And I think that's what held the that's what held the slaves together. And that's how they were able to overcome slavery because they had that close family mm -hmm. network and connection. So us connecting and knowing those family trees and keeping those families connected, not being so distant, those are some things, you know, that that you know working on as not just like but as black people, keeping mm -hmm. those things together and being concerned for each other. Being yeah. concerned. Yes. You know, yes, yes, that, that that's so important, you know, and that's that's one of the things, you know, that especially coming from an African um, background, we stay connected. You know, yes. if somebody dies, like I had a friend of mine who died the other day. He was a basketball player going through some tough time. We 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 raised 20,000 for his funeral. Mm, wow. You know, you know, so those kinds of things, just having love and concern for each other. Right. You know, as a people. As a people. Yes. And you have done so much for Liberia. You've done so much here in Maryland. And I would, I want people to know who Junda Morris is and what you do for Liberia to put their name on the map. Um, and you do so much for people of culture, people, brown skinned people. You do so much for them, and people don't know a lot of times who's behind the scenes of this. And Junda, I, first off, I want to say thank you. Thank you for so much that you have done to really put Liberia on the map. There's not a lot of people that really want to take on something because of the maybe the negative stigma that might be attached to it. But you want to bring out the beauty in it, the education in it, the art in it. And I appreciate the fact that you do that. So tell us a little bit about what you do, especially behind the scenes. I know you have Runway Liberia and a lot of other projects that you have started, that you have started. So tell us just a little bit about those. Again, um, thank, thank, thank you again, Derek. I'm truly humble. You know, I'm always behind the scene. I, I, this is a new thing coming in the front. Um, you know, but but for me, again, doing Runway Liberia and starting Runway Liberia, which is an art showcase using fashion as a medium um, in order to promote history. Um, mm -hmm. That was the whole purpose of creating this event where we can now have Liberian designers, designers from around the world with African-American designers joining together in order for us to market and brand each other. That's mm. that the whole purpose of doing this. This is, an, again, another cultural awareness, you know, um, because I got tired of people telling me no. 
Right, <laughs> right. That you can't do. And I'm not like, you know, there's so many talented people, you know, not only from my country, Liberia, but African Americans that are talented that don't get that opportunity to be right. able to showcase their, their 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 garments, you know, places. They can't afford the five thousand or the ten thousand dollars, you know, to be able to showcase. So can we create a platform? That is mm. reasonable for them to do that, but we're showcasing our models, we're showcasing our talent of diversity, and we can all do this, and we can now help people to market themselves and take their brands outside. So that's the whole purpose of what it is, why I do what I do with Runway Liberia International. It just happens that I'm from Liberia, so obviously yes. we put the you know the, the 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 name on the event, but the event is open for everybody, as you know, um, yes. and, you know, and 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 it's more of an empowerment. Um, mm. kind of thing because you know when every model that walks in the show I want to know your story I want to know why right. you're here and not just a number just walk down the you know that that I can build lasting friendships with people um you know so that's the whole purpose of what I do um and doing this and you have been there for me so I truly truly appreciate you um on this venture um this life journey I tell God I said why you keep having me do this thing that's not bringing me money but you know what it's more than money for me. It when is. I can connect yeah. with people and change people's lives and, you know, see them move on to do bigger things. Hey, I, when I see that, I say, you know what, my work is done, you know, and, 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 and that's my purpose. Yes. So, and as long as you know what your purpose is, that's where the riches are. Yes. And, absolutely. and the, the, your purpose and you're walking in your purpose and you believe in your purpose. Oh, believe me, there's blessings coming. Yes. You know, it's yes. just that it's, it's, it's that due time. Yes, absolutely. You have to have your hands out ready to receive what God has for you. And when he does, trust and believe me, Junda, you'll be right there in the line. And uh, we, we will be knowing you, Junda, I'm telling you, all over this world. Oh. We truly will. And I will tell you that I am so glad to say I was a part of, of walking with her through part of her journey and knowing you because it's, Again, we have to lift up each other now. I don't want to wait and June is spread out and laid out and, and then I got to get up there and say something about it. I, I think it's important that we do this for each other now. And like you said, your shows are not just about walking the runway, it's about your story. And all of us have a story. And it could, you know, a lot of times we don't want to tell our stories because there's some hurt and there's some pain, you know. But through that hurt and the pain, Look where we're at now. Yes. Black American people, people like very Africa, um, brown skin people, the strength that we have. And I said it at the beginning, and I'm going to say it now. The strength that we have is just powerful. And I love when you said it too. We have so much power of what we can do in our possibilities. But know your purpose. Walk in your purpose. And, in, and live your purpose. So you tell everybody where we can find you. Okay, you can find me on Instagram, Runway Liberia International on Instagram. On Facebook is Runway Liberia Showcase. Um, you can also find me at Junda Morris on IG. Any one of those places you can find me at, reach out. I'm very easy, easy and accessible yes. to deal with because at the end of the day, it's one love and helping each other. And we all call her Junda, but it is Junda. Is that what y'all <laughs> said? She just said Junda because it is Junda, but we all call her Junda. That's so okay. I accept anything. Or like my sister, my sister will tell you right when, no, my name is such and such. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not hung on that. I accept anything. And because I love you guys. So thank you. Yeah. And you have the strong man. Is it, is it called strong man? Oh my gosh. Yes, 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 yes. This year, a new venture, Liberia's strongest man. And now I'm going to be hosting West Africa's strongest man. One of the few black women. That's the one that's one, Dion uh, Martin is the first black woman that holds the Arnold Classic Strongman competition. And now me, little old me, I'm hosting West Africa Strongest later in the year. I'm going to be at the Arnold Classic. Hopefully I get to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's the goal. <laughs> but I get to go to the Arnold Classic. But it's Strongman. And again, it's empowering people. You yes. know, it's, it's empowering young Africans. Um, you know, to be able to, you know, it's not just fashion, but that's another another sports that is left out. And I'm 
wanting to enter that space to be able to empower people. So I'm super excited, super, super, super duper excited about that event. Well, thank you. Listen, we have ran out of time, but I want to thank you again, Junda, for coming on. Let me tell you something, Junda, you represent Black Girls Rock. You truly represent that. <laughs> so we thank you. This is what Black Girls Rock represents. Junda, Dunda Morris. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. To talking with 3D, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Derek Darrell Dixon, and you have watched this right here on Plush Work TV. Have a great evening. Again, this is just a little sample of Black history, but do your research. Learn about your Black history. It is very important. We love you guys. Have a good evening. Thank you again. When you're feeling down And like your world's moving slow Just remember your race It moves at your pace when marching towards your goals